Hey guys, you found Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue, and today I've got another great video for you. We're going to be doing a burn test on briquettes, and it's the big three. We're doing Kingsford, Royal Oak, and B and B. Stay tuned, and we'll get right to it. As promised, today we're doing a briquette burn test, and the parameters for this procedure, we're gonna be using three pounds of each. We're gonna burn it in a char griller, acorn Kamado style grill, and we're gonna use a Fireboard 2 Pro to control the temperature, and it will be connected to a Fireboard fan, the temperature probe. Probe sends the temperature information to the computer, uses that information to control the fan. Tells it to blow more, blow less, or how hard to blow. And it does a great job of controlling the temperature. We will be uh, also using a char griller smoking stone. We'll be lighting the charcoal with the torch. We'll pile it up at the back and then light the leading edge with the torch. This is what I call a low temperature startup, so you're not lighting the whole pile at one time. You want a control burn. We'll be measuring our activity from 200 degrees going up to our set point temperature, and then when it comes back down to our 200 degree mark, then we call it quits. But we reserve the right to restack it one time and see if we can get it back up above 200, if there's anything left. And at the end of the procedure, then we'll be weighing the ashes and unburned to see what's left. Describes our uh, burning parameters in greater detail. I'll leave a link for that video above, and that's called Best Lump Charcoal for Grilling. So that will be in a link above. And then we'll have a great set of graphs to look at because that's what the uh, Fireboard Do Pro software does. It provides you with all the information and I will post links to those graphs down below. And they're a great source of information for you. You can pull them up and they're interactive. You can go in there and look at the photos. You can dig around and find the notes. So I highly recommend that you check those out. And with that, we're gonna talk very briefly about the history of Kingsford briquettes. And the history of Kingsford was tied very much directly to the Model T Ford. Of course, Henry Ford produced the Model T Ford, and that was from 1908 through 1927. And each Model T used over a hundred board foot of lumber in each one, and a board foot is one inch thick, 12 inches wide by 12 inches long and they produced 15 million Model T's, so it required vast acreages of timber. Henry Ford uh, cut out the middleman, and he liked to source his own timber. At the time, he had a first cousin who was married to a man named Edward G. Kingsford, and Mr. Kingsford was an entrepreneur, a real estate man, and also what's known as a timber cruiser, and so he had experience in sourcing timber. And so he teamed up with Henry Ford. They built a sawmill slash body plant. Mr. Kingsford ran the plant. Then eventually Henry Ford looked around and said that they were generating too much waste. Okay, and so Ford was a known conservationist, but he was also interested in maximizing profit. So he acquired a briquette making process, which was patented in the late 1800s. And so they didn't invent the process, but they were the early adopters. Wasn't much activity using the process up until he started using it. And they built a briquette plant right next to the sawmill. And Edward Kingsford was instrumental in helping design and get this plant going and running the plant. They primarily made, at the time, industrial fuel. That was their primary market, seven inch pieces, or they could custom make whatever size that was needed, but the primary size at that time was seven inch. Then they became interested in trying to develop a market for home use. So the Ford dealership started selling portable grills exclusively at Ford dealerships. So you could buy your briquettes and grills at the Ford dealer. And then somewhere along the line, of course they stopped using quite as much wood making of the automobile. So a group of investors bought the briquette plant and then they renamed it Kingsford 
in honor of Edward G. Kingsford. So Kingsford never actually owned it, but he did help design it and operate it and was very instrumental in the process. Kingsford Charcoal today has a 80% market share, which is incredible when you think about all the different kinds of charcoal, which if you look around in the grocery store or wherever you buy your charcoal, and then think that eight out of every 10 bags sold is a Kingsford product. And then today, the Kingsford is under Clorox Corporation. So they are owned by a giant corporation. A spokesperson for Kingsford in an article that I read, it claims that their product is made from charred wood, coal, limestone, sodium nitrate, and starch. And when asked about borax or petroleum, they emphatically say no. Now, they do put some kind of accelerant on their a uh, lot of their products. And to me, it does smell like petroleum products, but I'm not either claiming it is or it isn't. I'm just telling you what the article that I found stated. Okay, so now let's get down to the part that you really came here for, and that's to look at the actual burn test results. And we're gonna start with Kingsford because we've already talked so much about Kingsford. Here we have the Kingsford, and from 200 to 200, time came in at four hours and 50 minutes, and it, the ashes and unburned was 0 .8, 0 .8, that's almost, eight, well, it's eight tenths of a pound. Okay, and then let's compare that to the Royal Oak, and the Royal Oak came in at five hours and 44 minutes from the time it hit 200 to the time it came back down to 200. Now, it did have a nicer chart. It stayed here longer at our set point. I think the uh, Royal Oak outdid the Kingsford. All right, and then let's compare that lastly to B&B. Okay, the B&B, as you can see, came in at six hours and 20 minutes, so technically it won the competition, but it did not do a good job of fulfilling our desired set point of 500 degrees. Didn't spend much time at all it's set on set point. The B&B uh, &B had ashes and unburned of uh, four tenths of a pound. That's our information that, uh, read it and weep, that's exactly as it happened. Okay, does this little experiment prove one's better than another? No, not at all, but it does show you what's going on. Kingsford, throughout the barbecue world, has a reputation of producing a lot of ash. Do they produce a lot of ash? Well, they certainly produced the most in this experiment, and they had the shortest burn time but Kingsford is readily available everywhere. It's just another point of information for you to use. And I hope that you found something that you liked in this video. And if you do, hit the like button. I need some likes and I need more subscribers. I appreciate you watching. Hope to see you next time at Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. <laughs>